Hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel and today I'm going to kind of go over song and scene modes inside of Beatmaker 3. I've had some questions via conversations and just on my YouTube channel and I just kind of want to address like I think there's been some updates to BM3 on how it handles the scene mode a little bit and so I just want to go over that again. Plus I am using a new lavalier microphone by Little Blinks can't see it but look at a cool little aperture logo um, there we go might be a little better um, but I bought this one because it came with a TRRS to TRS adapter which I needed because I have a previous I have a lavalier microphone um, which is really cool for iOS devices or Androids or whatever with the TRRS cables because it has this little extension coming out of it so that you can use it as a headphone jack as well as the microphone. And so you can actually hear what you're recording um, with it. So that's cool. But I couldn't use it in my camera if I just wanted to plug the um, lavalier mic in the camera. Or I couldn't use it in my Zoom which has a stereo input jack on the back for the um, one of the ports. I couldn't use it for either one of those and so I was going to get me a adapter but this one came with the adapter and so I figured I would give it a try as well. And so this hopefully will give me a little more hands free because when I'm using the Zoom H4M Pro to record, you know, I would sit it in front of me and if I move my head side to side or whatever the voice would kind of, you know, get scattered across the the stereo spectrum and it just I don't know, it was, um, I'm just trying to alleviate, alleviate that and alleviate me having to focus my attention on the Zoom when I can just focus on the tutorial at hand. And, you know, this, this is a good little test as well. So, anyways, let's jump into Beatmaker 3. And so kind of the questions was they didn't fully understand how the scene mode worked if they're using... Um, song mode to build up their track and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load a bank into A and so this is will be a clean a clean track let's turn on the metronome let's loop it let's set the loop to four bars just to get something going and I'm going to hit record and I'm in song mode Okay, so now we got that going on. And I don't know what that, I don't know what happened on that, but I can just drag that over. Okay, so now I have, that's weird. It's done that before where it's kind of a little wanky and my, I guess this is good that they brought this up because this is one of my biggest complaints about Beatmaker 3 is when I'm in pattern mode, I cannot drag this guy over and it drives me insane. Probably, it's almost a deal breaker for me with this app sometimes because I don't wanna have to select and drag all this over, you know, and delete this and then move this this way I would like to be able to just edit the pattern and drag this bar right here developers please I love this app I just want if I record something I'm a little off or I want to copy this pattern say I record a 16 bar pattern and I want to copy duplicate it and then move the playhead over a little bit I don't know if that's built into the programming or not but I just want to be able to move this not just the right but I want to move the left one as well or be able to click in the middle and move it as a whole and so I can create a long pattern and then break it up into smaller sections without having to you know delete and move things around because it's just okay I digressed a little bit but it'll be okay so Let's get back to song mode. 
So we're in song mode, and I created a pattern, as you can see. But in the scene mode, there's nothing. And I think in a, before some of the updates, I feel like it would automatically kind of populate scene one a little bit. But the point of this, the point of the scenes are for it to be like Ableton in a way that you can play your patterns and you can remix things and do things in different orders similar similar to the launch pad or to the Ableton Live scene mode except for they're obviously they're horizontal instead of vertical per scene or per track so the tracks are are horizontal and the scenes are vertical whereas launch pad and stuff other ones are the other way around so if you're in here and you create a pattern and then I go here see it works there and it's beautiful here not so much in this pattern mode but anyway so if I'll create another pattern So I got that one going on. And so now I've created two patterns. But then there's nothing in scene mode. And so if I want those two to show up in scene mode, I have to physically tell it to. And so I've got 808 here. And so these are the two patterns that I created. And so I can just, whichever one you're selected on, it will show up. And so if I select on two, and I got two highlighted and I click on pattern two, it'll go there. Or I can just long press and I can choose whatever pattern that I want to. But when you go back into song mode, you can see that they're grayed out. So if I want to play it in a linear fashion, I need to come over here and play it. If I want to play it in the scene mode, then I can come over here and do it that way. And you can see that song mode is grayed out and the scene mode is now active and so if I add another bank here well, let's just pull in a lead and play something and so let's go back to song mode so let's go back here. Say I want to create a pattern here. Uh, hit the play button over here in the corner and it'll activate the song mode again. And if I hit And so I created that little ditty of a pattern. And so now that's there. And if I go to scenes, there's nothing, but I have to actually tell it the scenes that I want. And so this cherry lead apparently comes with a bunch of pre-made patterns, but uh, pattern 22 was the one that I wanted. So you can see you can and then from there you can just start building up your scenes but if you're in song mode and you're in a more linear fashion it's um I'm trying to think how to put it it just kind of builds up things in more linear fashion but you can't think of it as this is one big midi file these are individual little patterns and so if you wanted to, you can create patterns here and then start dragging them into song mode. Or if you want to play it more live like I was showing here, just know that they're going to start populating in the bank itself. And so you get to that by clicking, tapping up at the top when you have whatever bank is selected. And so if I'm over here in this mode... 
I can select and that's going to show me the patterns that are inside of that particular bank. So hopefully that makes sense, you know, song mode versus scene mode. You know, you've got a more linear versus a clip launching style and they're both very handy and very effective if you know what you're doing or if you know how to do it. And now the scene is going to take the length of the biggest um um, what do you call it? A scene. So if I make a sixteen, a sixteen bar, and see now, scene one is sixteen bars because it's got to play through pattern three, which I created, and made it sixteen bars. And so it'll play this pattern here. It'll play it four times to the one pattern here, and so it'll. The scene will be based on the longest length scene or pattern on the that particular scene. And then if I go back here, oops, and change that one to pattern one, you can see that the scene two changes to four instead of 16. And so that's just kind of how you do it. And then you just build your patterns out this way. Um, I really, there's a few things that, you know, gripe me about this app, but overall, it works out really, really well, in my opinion, for, for most, for most things, but you just gotta, I don't know, when you're working in the song mode, it's still, you still gotta kind of get your mind around, okay, each time that I record something, it's gonna create a little pattern. Now, one thing I did discover is if you're in loop mode and you're in this section and so I have 808 clean here if I play it's going to give it that but if I hit record and I'm in this section it's going to be editing pattern one And so that's kind of the overdub fashion, but it don't give you any indication that it's overdubbing. And I do like that it's not trying to create a new pattern right on top of pattern one, like pattern three, and then you end up with two different patterns on top of each other and you don't really know what's going on. So that's one thing that was a little bit wanky in a previous version, but now it does overdub and you can see how it's even automated the velocity of those particular notes as I was using the um, cool little trigger pad over here. But just so note that if you want to do some overdubbing, if you want to create something and kind of overdub, then in scene mode or in song mode, if you've got the loop on and you've got that highlighted, it'll overdub whatever pattern is in that section and not create one on top of it. So that's good. So other than that, I don't have anything else. Uh, let me know in the comments below how the audio of my voice sounded using the, the the lav mic, you know, versus if you've watched any of my previous videos, this is the first time I'm really using the lav mic for this. And so I feel like it's really handy. I feel like a lot more hands-free, even though, you know, the zoom is hands-free as well. But I feel like I have more freedom when I'm creating the videos to, to move around and I'm not gonna get any kind of, you know, where my voice is too soft or too loud in certain sections because it's gonna be pretty consistent throughout the entire video. So, thanks for watching guys. Um, like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. All relative links are in the description and I will talk to you guys later.